Mm -hmm. Ooh, what's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing extremely. Oh my God, what is this? What is this buzzing? What is? Excuse me. You guys were hearing that the whole time. I am so sorry. I don't know what that buzzing noise was, but I hope that it does not return. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope you're having an absolutely fabulous day. A beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to some big, big train. Did you hear my computer creak when I opened it up? Oh my god. Uh, we're going to continue on from where we left off with the underfall, underfall, underfall yard. We're going to listen to Victorian Brickwork, the next track, the third track on the album here. There is also a mosquito in this room. I just want to let you know right now. So if you see me randomly doing a little jiu-jitsu, a little karate, you know exactly what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> otherwise... Hope that you're having a wonderful day. Let me, hold on. You might hear some buzzing really quick. I just want to make sure that this is, hold on. Oh, oh, oh that's so bad. Hopefully that, that stays well. Okay. I'm going to turn the fan on because it's just a wee bit too hot in here as well. And without further ado, let's go ahead and listen. Sorry. I was showing you my rump for a little bit. Let's. Is it back? No, it's gone. Okay, that, that buzzing noise is bothering me. I'm like, come on, just sound right. Uh, let's do it. Victorian brickwork. Center, center, listen, and we'll discuss after. Let's go. Oh, no. 
that Mellotron behind that. Interesting change. On this foreboding. I like that guitar, or the fade with the guitar and strings kind of left over. There's that Mellotron, singing sweetly like a siren in the back. Along with cello.
let's discuss Victorian brickwork. Um, sometimes a journey is best remembered by the way it ends or the way that the journey finishes. And before we talk about the, the rest of the meat in this delicious hamburger, let's talk about the ending. What a grand finale, what an exit for the whole band to make. Wonderful, well, <laughs> wonderful orchestration. Love the solo that happened there. Um, if I can pick apart one thing inside of that ending, and I mean pick apart in a good way, the use of the tuba, which of course is, I don't know for sure, but you know, a deep horn. Alongside of the bass playing, which was just deep, filled with glorious reverberations there. Just, just orders magnitudes of power, sheer power, underneath the solo, underneath everything that was being built. But then atop that, you had a wonderful horn solo, which at first I was thinking was like, I don't know, trumpet or something. Uh, but that actually looks like it's going to be Rich Evans on a cornet. So that's Rich Evans doing the cornet solo, it looks like, at the end of that track there. Let me say something that I think is really, really neat about Big Big Train. While the main band encompasses four members, they always have like a lot of other members, for the most part, other orchestra, you know, horn members, string members, ensembles, and such, to, of course, add to the music. Rich Evans plays cornet in three tracks on this album. As far as I know, he's just a guest musician. He's not like one of the band members, you know what I mean? And I could be totally wrong. How cool is it to give arguably the highest point in the song, to give a major solo spot in the grand finale of the track to a guest musician and to let them do their thing? I think that that is incredibly honorable. I think that is incredibly like giving and it kind of shows the the people behind the band who they are, how they are. It kind of shows their personality personality a little bit. If I'm just digging deeper than just beneath this track, you know? To me, that shows something. That shows that as greatly talented as all of the members here are, obviously within the band and the core themselves, they're not afraid to, for the song and for the story behind the song, to allow that limelight to be given to someone else. And I don't mean this in a putting down way, but to a guest musician over a core member. Because we could have easily put in a really brilliant guitar solo, in which there are brilliant and wonderful guitar solos in here. Could have, could have put something else in there, and yet they gave it to Rich Evans, Cornette, for that spotlight, for that solo, for that moment, for that glorious, glorious ending. I think that's wonderful. Um, of course, David Longden, his voice is melodious. It flows over these cold seas and these cold waters described in the song with absolute beauty. There's a deep, rich passion in the way that he sings. And obviously I love the way that he sings. Um, I kind of mentioned before the bass playing, but Greg Spotton or Andy Poole, it may be one of them. They're both credited with bass on the album. I think it may be Andy Poole because he's credited with the bass first, but I don't know for sure. Regardless, whoever's playing bass in here is absolutely wonderful. Like I said, really playing along with the song, adding that deep reverb to the heavier moments, but adding a lot of light, floaty kind of melody to the lighter parts. Especially with the guitar playing, that's going to be um, Dave Gregory on the guitar here. Actually, he's only credited on one through one and six. I don't know. Everyone's playing something <laughs> in this album. Everyone's doing something. Whoever's playing guitar... I love the way it opens up with that tender guitar alongside of um, Longden's voice. And then eventually Nick gets in with these drums that are just so fun to listen to. It's, it's not flashy. And yet, if you listen, like he's playing in that deep pocket. Yeah, and he's, he's absolutely bombastic with what he's doing. Subtle in certain cases, but there's so much technical wizardry that's... Wizardry? Did I say that? That's going on in the track <laughs> with Nick's drumming that it, while it's not like flashy or overly technical... It's, it's playing to the point. And once again, it's playing to the song. And I love that. Like I said, the track has a lot of highs and lows in the use of dynamics, which I think is always also very well. And that's always used really nicely in a long track like this. Keeps her from getting boring, stale, or any certain moments overstaying their welcome, while at the same time not changing up so much 
that it becomes hard to actually hold on to something. And I think the, the way that they use the dynamics is really, really nice in here. So, listen to this beautiful light guitar playing. Some of it reminds me of, in a sense, the way that Steve Howe would play, like from Yes. There's just something very beautiful, light about the melodies, uh, perhaps a little bit classical. There's a certain drama in the voice of London as well. Bring in a little bit. What is that, Flanger? I don't know. <laughs> but then, skipping ahead. Listen to how those keys breathe a certain light into these epic moments like this. And guitar-wise, this track has been ripping it up, shredding it up from minute one or zero to the very ending. And I think that the guitar work is equally, equally, is very incredible. <laughs> <laughs> as everything else in here the guitar work actually i i it stood out to me a lot and usually guitar isn't always like the thing that i hear overtly just because like i don't play guitar i don't really know anything about guitar and i don't have a a musical spiritual connection to guitar except when it's played good and i just like what i hear but here there was something about the way the guitar is being played that i really really enjoyed um, even though I still could not exactly tell you exactly who's playing guitar on this track. I want to say perhaps Dave Gregory, but I could I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Whoever's doing it, though, is wonderful. I right, listen to this. And the bass work actually reminds me a little bit of Chris Squire in the sense that Chris, when he plays, he has this this power behind it because of the way he plays with, the, you know, the 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 finger and the pick he has in the same fingers whatever so he gets a little bit of an extra power a little stronger vibrations the playing here reminded me of that because yes it's it's thoroughly powerful but at the same time it's, it's kind of floaty like i mentioned like it's very light it just kind of floats in the air like brilliant colors and vibrant winds you know so i just really like the way that this track has so much technical technicality going on in it there's so many different dynamics different colors lots of vibrancy at the same time, it comes together in this wonderful composition from a musical point of view. And then we're going to dig deeper. Did I just say? Did I just say, we're going to dig deeper? <laughs> to look at it from a songwriting point of view as well. I'm losing it. Call up the boys, call them now. Time to bring them home. They will call if they want to. Fog hampered the search, lost at sea, lost in the water. He told me many stories of the great ones. Lights might bring them home. Every day they put the boats out, but not this day. So some sort of crew has been lost in the sea, has been lost out there, and they cannot put out boats to search for them because the fog has hampered that search. So, of course, you don't want to send people out to get lost. And then, you know, now you're looking for two people or two crews instead of just one. So we have a little bit of a disaster, perhaps a tragedy uh, going on here. Fog hampered the search. Now great shock diamonds fill the sky. Oh, I just minimized window. Uh, and the deep. Lost in the low light and ocean tides, the love you never meant to hide. Love light and ocean tides, the love you never meant to hide. Too far south misplaced in my hometown, the Victorian brickwork, weathered but unchanged. So I'm getting the, of course, story that some sort of crew was lost. But the Victorian brickwork weathered but unchanged what is the the victorian brickwork what does that have to do i suppose with this story because i understand like i'm, I'm looking at pictures of victorian brickwork literally but i want to know like what does it have to do with the story that big big train themselves are telling i'm looking at it right now um let me continue on with the lyrics while that loads up here as the waves make toward a distant shore as the last words are spoken into a rising storm falling away he showed me many places, made me many things, carry me back home as if lost on the water. He told me many stories of the great ones, lights might bring them home. Every day they put the boats out, but not this day. Now I know who I am, I know what I mean, and I know where I came from, from the sea. So like I said, crew is lost, missing, people are lost. Let's read the actual story. Let's see if I can find that here. It was loading before. Uh, looking at Victorian brickwork, I'm looking on Big Big Train's website, actually, itself. Uh, it says uh, the second song. Okay, the second song about Greg's father exploring their fractured relationship before he, his death. He was a Navy man, and this song is inspired by his time at sea. Okay, well, there's the, the big personal touch um, now looking at this now. So it's about Greg's father 
exploring their fractured relationship and written just before his death, it seems like. So that makes sense now looking at it from, you know, that perspective, the words regarding the sea, the ocean. That's why he says, he showed me many places, made me many things, carried me back home. Okay, he told me stories of the great ones. Okay, okay. Now, because it didn't say directly here on Big Big Train's website, was his father lost at sea? I can only inquire. I can't say for sure because I'm just reading what it says on the website. But that would make sense with the lyrics. Of course, it doesn't have to be. But either way, it adds a great personal touch to the music itself, which makes it even more powerful. You know, when you hear a story like that or when you read that, that makes it 10 times more powerful. So great track. I didn't expect anything less from BBT, but I would love to know what you guys thought of the track. You can let me know in the comments down below. Follow me on Twitter, support the channel on Patreon, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you as always for being here, and I'll see you all later. Bye.